What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fantasy Addiction Network. Today, we're talking the XFL. The St. Louis Battlehawks are going to be talking XFL fantasy football, player rankings, and offensive breakdown for the Battlehawks. We're not going to waste any time. Let's get right into it. All right, guys. So let's begin by looking at the head coach of the Battlehawks. So they hired Jonathan Hayes, who probably not a lot of people know. I had to look him up myself. Hadn't really heard this name before, but he was the tight end coach for the Cincinnati Bengals from 2003 until 2018. So has a lot of tenure with an NFL team, but didn't do anything more than be a tight end coach uh, for that entire time. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that translates into um, the XFL with you know, completely new rules and finally taking over as a head coach. So this is a really interesting team to watch. They kind of have a weird balance of players um, with you know some positions that are lacking, whereas some positions are looking really well. Um, so it's going to be a really interesting team to watch from a fantasy perspective. But we'll go down and just break them out piece by piece and again just overall if you guys are looking to play fantasy football in the xfl i already created rankings for you guys you can click the link in the description or go to fantasyaddictionnetwork.com you can download those for absolutely no charge they'll be updated all off season long up until the time that the season starts so whenever you draft you can know that they're being updated regularly all right but let's look at the quarterbacks first um so there's Still a quarterback battle going on right now. We don't know exactly who is going to be the starting quarterback. So it's between Taylor Heineke and Jordan Te'amu. Now, let's look at Taylor Heineke first. Um, if, you know, I think if this, I'm just to be honest, I think if this quarterback position was clear, we'd actually rank one of these quarterbacks, whoever would have the starting job in tier two. Because again, they have a pretty strong supporting cast. But again, with how murky it is right now and just the rule changes with like the double forward pass, this could kind of turn into like a two quarterbacks being used situation, which would just bring down the overall value of both quarterbacks. Um, now, again, let's look at Taylor Heineke first. He is the most recent experience in the NFL, but he's always had trouble with interceptions. And I do think that will uh, end up you know, hurting him a little bit here. If he can't keep those interceptions under control, it's probably going to end up being Jordan Te'amu's job. But I do think that Heineke will probably end up getting the nod just because of his experience in the NFL. Now, jumping over to Jordan Te'amu, he has not played in the NFL. He's still incredibly young at age 22. He just graduated last year, and he played with both DK Metcalf and AJ Brown. So I think I'd actually personally prefer if Te'amu would end up getting the job here um, because I think that he he uh, gives you a bit more upside and athleticism than Heineke. I just don't think that he's necessarily going to get it in the offseason, but we'll see. If Jordan Te'amu ends up getting the job, then I think he jumps up right there into Tier 2. Um, but he's definitely a name to monitor as a backup because if Heineke goes down or gets benched, I think he becomes a very relevant fantasy quarterback in a league that's going to be lacking those. All right, now let's look at the running backs. Now, Christian Michael is a name that pretty much anyone that's been playing fantasy football for a while will know and recognize as a very, very athletic and talented running back that just never really got anything going uh, for him in the NFL. He had a nice few games with the Seattle Seahawks a few years ago, and he's always carried that promise and that hint of being great, but either injuries or just lack of performances always held him back. Well, bring him here into the XFL, into a league where he's able to play with uh, players that aren't as talented on the defensive side as they are in the NFL, and I think he's going to absolutely shine. Christian Michael was the first pick for the Battle Hawks in the skill position draft, so they knew that he was talented and they wanted him on their team over any receivers. They drafted him over a lot of talented guys, and I think that Christian Michael is going to be the number one running back in the XFL, assuming health. I think this is finally a time that we can be excited to have Christian Michael on our fantasy teams again. I would say, uh, really just looking to, uh, based on the projected volume and draft capital, I. I wouldn't be surprised if he finished the number one running back, but should at least be in that elite tier. The other really nice thing here is he doesn't really have 
that many uh, other running backs competing for targets. Really, the only other good running back on this team is Matt Jones, who has also you know, been a perennial disappointment in the NFL. But he's also more of a plotter and a power back than Michael, whereas Christian Michael actually offers some uh, you know, juice in the receiving game. So they'll probably use Jones to spell Michael a little bit, but really Michael is going to be the closest thing you're going to see in the XFL to an every down back. And I think that he's every bit worth that number one overall pick uh, for your fantasy teams. All right. So look at the receivers here. There's a little bit less clarity as to who's going to be the true alpha, but there are some good options here. Someone is going to emerge. So let's look at each and we'll figure out which one um, will make more sense for our fantasy team. So first I want to talk about Terrence Williams. Uh, he's the most seasoned veteran on this team. He is a bit older, but has most recently played with the Cowboys last year. Um, decent speed and a reliable route runner. So I don't necessarily predict ridiculous volume for Williams, but I think he's going to be a solid veteran that gets targeted a lot just based on his experience in the NFL. Um, and I think he'll end up being one of the better options in St. Louis. They also drafted uh, DeMornay Pearson L., uh, he, I think he's end up going to be the likely slot receiver. He's a smaller uh, bodied guy with a bit more quickness. Um, to me, I think he leaves a lot to be desired in his overall metrics, but I think the draft capital, you know, getting drafted in the third round indicates that St. Louis believes in him and uh, they want to get him going in their offense. So I wouldn't be looking to draft him too highly, but he ends up being more of a depth pick rather uh, than anything else. If Terrence Williams underwhelms, then they're going to have to go to someone. I think volume, again, is king in fantasy football, so he could end up being good on volume alone. Um, and then they also have like a bit of a battle for the third receiver spot here between LaDainian Washington and Quentin Patton. Um, we'll need to pay post close attention to this in training camp. And again, as I mentioned, we'll be updating our rankings as training camp goes on before final cuts come, determining who's going to be the best option here. They're both past the age of Apex, a little bit older, but are likely to play the Z role to Williams X. So whoever gets the job is probably going to be a pretty reliable option. But really overall, with the exception of uh, Pearson L, the higher talented receivers are pretty old and will likely see a few names that are not on the radar right now jump up. So again, really looking at these receivers, uh, a lot of their more talented guys are a bit on the older side. So there's probably going to end up being someone that flies in under the radar that uh, becomes a name as the fantasy season goes on or even through off season, which again, we'll be updating rankings for you guys. So if that happens before the season starts, you'll know who to end up drafting. There's definitely going to be some uh, you know, passing volume to be had. It's just kind of murky right now who's gonna end up being the better target, which really just leaves you without a true sense of who's gonna be the best receiver here. Obviously my money right now would be on Terrence Williams, but I'm not that sold on him yet. Uh, so hopefully we'll have some better information going into the season. And then when we look at the tight ends, um, there's really only one guy to really consider here, Connor Davis. He's a raw prospect at 6'8 and 260 pounds and very highly unproven, but I think he may end up uh, being used primarily as a blocker as well. However, you know, dealing with tight end coach uh, as the head coach here, um, he'll probably be a, you know, a pretty darn good blocker because I'm he knows how to train tight ends. I do think that he'll end up getting used in the red zone, but it's not someone that I'm too excited about drafting. I think this just bodes well for Christian Michael again. So if Connor Davis ends up being a you know really good tight end from helping the run game perspective, this just, again, all bolsters back to Christian Michael being the best player on this team. So again, as I kind of talked about at the beginning of this video, there's you know quite a few... Um, disparities across the positions here so we have a pretty decent quarterback and a really fantastic running back without a lot of depth and then tons of depth depth plays at wide receiver but no true alpha and then a tight end that isn't really known for catching the ball so overall we're going to have you know a lot of adjusting to do with the battle hawks as we go on but overall i think the best plan here is to make sure you get christian michael on your team and then probably try to avoid the rest of the options here. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, if you want to see all of my rankings, feel free to click the link in the description or go to fantasyaddictionnetwork.com where you can view and download rankings that will be updated all the way up until the start of the season. And then, uh, you know, we'll continue on uh, from there, but making sure that you guys have the best 
uh, access to information throughout the off season, getting ready for this inaugural XFL launch. And we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next one.